Newton theorem, um, uh, interestingly, um, if you look in the, uh, the intro for the section, it talks about how uh, math concepts in terms of how they originated um, could have originated in different places, sometimes about the same time. Um, and then you also have situations where uh, a concept originated earlier, but it's from another location and from a later time where credit you know, has been given. Um, and, and within the last 100 years, what you see in terms of scholarship uh, with uh, mathematics is a, a crediting of where some of this content uh, came from and, and then trying to name those sources and with that, given the, the time frame, um, there, are, there are certain uh, theorems in mathematics named for a certain person. Uh, but historically, uh, we have uh, seen that those uh, same uh, notions or theorems uh, were known earlier from uh, other places. Um, a lot of what we think we, we have uh, in terms of math and science uh, that comes from Europe um, uh, through uh, whatever you call it, the Enlightenment period or the so-called uh, Renaissance period. Um, a lot of that information uh, you will find um, existed earlier, centuries earlier, in places like uh, Egypt, uh, Shangri-La, Timbuktu, and also in China, um, and also in India as well too. A lot of that same con uh, content came from uh, from out east, um, and then also um, in the uh, in the south, or, or that is in Africa. So, um, uh, the question is, uh, uh, did some of the scholars in the 1600s did they were they aware of the earlier content from other civilizations, we're not for certain. Um, it's possible, but again, we're not for certain. Um, but we know now that the information that is given is useful. Uh, and then also, uh, uh, what's fascinating is that the research still continues with a lot of uh, mathematics uh, today and uh, science. Um, uh, and physics uh, today, uh, where those um, disciplines uh, work together. And, and what's even more fascinating is the combination of, of computer technology uh, and then also uh, with satellite uh, imagery uh, being able to correct some of the mathematics uh, as well and also to confirm. So uh, with that in mind, uh, the binomial theorem, uh, we will uh, talk about what's called the binomial con uh, coefficient, expand um, binomials uh, raised uh, by power, and then to find a particular term in a binomial uh, expression. So first, uh, we talk about these coefficients. Um, and so the definition of a binomial coefficient is defined on what we call in combinatorics uh, the uh, so-called permutation, and this is, this is what this is here. It is defined as, this is read as n factorial. N factorial, and what that simply means is N factorial looks like N times, bless you, 
n minus 1 times n minus 2 times and so on times 3 times 2 times 1 with 1 factorial being defined as 1 and 0 factorial being defined as 1. So for example, if we have 4 factorial, this is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And so we get just 24. Have you seen factorials before? Have you seen factorials before? Well, good. So this so-called permutation is defined as n things right here. This uh, permutation is defined as n things taken r at a time. Uh, is based on what we call the counting principles. Uh, how do we count and, and how uh, uh, were uh, the principles of counting, how did that uh, originate? It originated uh, initially uh, in Africa in, in terms of being able to count by making a selection. And, and the idea is that I can make a selection based on how many that I have to choose from. And then the next selection, if I, if I take a term from the first, I don't have that term anymore. So if I have nine terms, I have nine choices for the first selection. Then for the second selection, I have eight terms. And then if, I, if I'm choosing three, then I have seven. So then I, I multiply nine times eight times seven, which gives me the, the total possibility of selections. That's how we define mathematics, oh, that is uh, multiplication. So uh, we talk about these so-called counting principles in terms of addition, how addition is defined, and how uh, multiplication is defined. There's one course called finite mathematics that goes into that, that goes into depth with the so-called uh, uh, counting principles. <clears throat> but here, just concerned about, um, about this definition, this formula. So this says, this is n things taken r at a time. If I have n, a big number, how, how many times can I select r if I have, if n is 10, I want to select just, just three of them. So we talk about n things or 10 things taken three at a time. So that would be, say for example, the first choice is 10, the next choice is 9, the next choice is 8. Sometimes uh, for the, the combination, uh, we talk about if I can select something and then I replace it back. So um, I, I select a number uh, from a, a, a box, but then I put that number back in. So if, I, if I'm selecting um, uh, three things and I have nine choices, then that would be nine times nine times nine because we have replacement. So, um, <clears throat> but here, this uh, permutation uh, uh, ideally uh, talks about uh, when I select something, I'm not selecting that uh, anymore. So the, we talk about the, the order of arrangement is significant. <clears throat> well, uh, this is defined in things taken R at a time as N factorial divided by R factorial times parentheses N minus R factorial. So um, this gives us a number. This gives us a number. And we'll see uh, how that is. Uh, in just a moment. That's, that's the formula. Oh, by the way, I'll make sure that on the test uh, I have that formula for you so you don't have to keep it in your head, right? All right. In the book, I, I like how they do it. You read the book and they say, checkpoint. So they want to make sure, uh, Emmanuel, that you're getting it. Are you with me? Okay, don't fool me now. <laughs> oh, bless your heart. I love you. So, part A. So, we have here the permutation of six things taken three at a time. So, this is said to be based on the formula six factorial over three factorial times six minus three factorial. See, that, that's the formula. N things taken are yes at a time this is n factorial all over r factorial 
r factorial times n minus r close that up factorial you know the old song from run dmc i'm blind i can't see I need to wear those glasses like dmc but anyway um I know you don't remember uh, when that was. <laughs> so this is six factorial. We have the three factorial there. And six minus three factorial. Six minus three is just three. And then that's factorial. For the six factorial, I'm just going to count down six times five times four. I'm going to stop at three factorial because I have a three factorial downstairs. Take the first three factorial, and I'll just write that as three times two times one, uh, and then this is times three factorial. So the three factorial divided by three factorial cancels out from the top to the bottom. That first three factorial, I just expanded that. Right. Now if you think about it here, I guess we need to keep that as red so we can do some more counseling. Three times two is six, so that cancels out. And so all we have left is just 5 times 4, and that's just 20. Oh, the formula's right there on, on the top right. I didn't see it. Okay. So, so this is this, this formula for the coefficient. So let's take this next one. Six things taken zero at a time. So this is 6 factorial over 0 factorial times 6 minus 0 factorial. So this is 6 factorial up top. You remember we defined 0 factorial. We define 0 factorial as 1. So that's 1. And then this is 6 minus 0 factorial. That's 6 factorial. Well, 6 factorial, anything divided by itself is just 1. Part C, eight things taken two at a time. Eight things taken two at a time. So this is eight factorial over two factorial all over eight minus two factorial. So this is eight factorial. Two factorial is just two and then uh, 8 minus 2 factorial is 6 factorial. So for the top, I'm only going to count down to what I see in the bottom, 6 factorial. So this is 8 times 7 times 6 factorial, all over 2 times 6 factorial. So here, the 6 factorials cancel out. And then we just have 4 times 7 is 28. Any questions? Part D, three things taken three at a time. Three factorial over three factorial times three minus three factorial. Well, just off the bat, 3 factorial divided by 3 factorial cancels out. So I have here 1 all over 3 minus 3 factorial is 0 factorial, and 0 factorial is defined as 1, so I have 1 divided by 1. We'll just get 1. So here, this binomial theorem, it looks like if we use, this is called Pascal's uh, triangle. It looks like Pascal's triangle in terms of bi means two, binomial, 
is a two term expression. And so we look at the power. So a plus b to the first, a plus b to the all to the second, a plus b to the third. Now you understand at this point that you don't make the mistake at this point. I've seen some who have done this. X plus Y to the second is not X squared plus Y squared, right? That just don't mean if I see X plus Y all to the second power, it don't, that, that doesn't mean square X and square Y. That means that I have to foil, foil, F-O-I-L. That's X plus Y times X plus Y, which is X squared plus 2XY plus Y squared. So we don't make those mistakes at this level. <clears throat> so A plus B to the second, A plus B to the third, A plus B to the fourth. And you, you see how this expansion, this is uh, the binomial theorem says we can produce all of these expanded terms. That's what the binomial theorem says. So all these terms here can be produced, replicated by the theorem. Now, I want you to observe uh, some things as we look at this. Now, now, notice that for the power of the first term, the first term is A, the second term is B. First term is A, second term is B. Right? So I want you to notice that the A terms, look at their power, they start with, with whatever that power is, if it's 5, and then it goes down. A to the 5th, A to the 4th, A to the 3rd, A to the 2nd, A to the 1st, A to the 0. No more A. The second term, B, look at its power. Its powers increase. See that? First term, there's no B. B to the 1st, B to the 2nd, B to the 3rd, B to the 4th. You stop at B to the 5th because that's the power. So for the binomial expansion, the first term, its power, is always decreasing. And the second term's power increasing. Right. Keep that in mind. The second thing that uh, you want to notice is that the coefficients, the coefficients, say for example, this is, this is 1, 3, 3, and 1. And then the coefficient here is 1, 4, 6, 4, and 1. This guy right here, the n things taken r at a time, will give us those coefficients. Or, or you can use Pascal's triangle. Now, Pascal's triangle is, is that item that uh, Blaise Pascal, a uh, great mathematician, who is credited as being uh, the originator of computer science at a time, you know, in the 1600s, 1700s, where there was no computer. <laughs> so I, I was the... Uh, I was the father of, of computer science and there was no computers. It's, it's the concept of how the computers think. Uh, uh, but what's interesting is, again, if you go back and, and look at uh, Chinese history, you will find uh, the, ex the same concepts. Hundreds, if not probably a, a close to a thousand years uh, before uh, Blaise Pascal. Um, now, now Blaise Pascal didn't say, if, if I'm correct, he didn't say that uh, that he birthed this information, he, um, but he, he used it. Um, and and Pascal was a, a great man. And by the way, he was uh, he he was an advocate. He was an advocate for the cross. <laughs> so. But notice, look at those coefficients, and we, we talk about it uh, a little bit later, but the coefficients can be built based on this, what we call Blaise Pas, uh, called uh, Pascal's triangle. First, we start with one, take, take one, 
And then to the, the left and to the right of one down below, uh, we just keep bringing down ones. So on, on the, the far left extreme and the far right extremes, we keep bringing down ones. Why? Because the coefficients for the furthest left extreme and the furthest right extreme, all those coefficients are one. Have you noticed that? Right. Look at a plus b to the fifth. Look at h to the fifth. Its coefficient is one. Look at b to the fifth. Its coefficient is one. So put a one here, one there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the two numbers that I have here on the left and right, and I'm going to add them. And I get two. All right? Bring down the one. Bring down the one. Okay? So now one plus two is three. Two plus one is three. Bring down the one, bring down the one. One plus three is four. Three plus three, six. Three plus one, four. All right? Then bring down the one, bring down the one. One plus four, five. Four plus uh, six is ten. Ten, five. I could be getting off track. Those are the coefficients. So look. This corresponds to n is 0. That's this guy right here. But well, it's not even there. You don't see it. This is a plus b to the 0 power. Just get 1. And then a plus b to the first power. It's like I'm missing that one. It's supposed to be just 1 and 1. One and a one. This is one and then one and one. And then we add one plus one, we get two. One plus one, we get two. So, so here, this guy is when n is zero, when n is one when n is 2. Look at the coefficients. 1, 2, and 1. 1, 2, and 1. When n is 3, look at the coefficients. 1, 3, 3, 1. 1, 3, 3, 1. When n is 4, look at the coefficients. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. You keep on doing that until, right? So, we call, they call that Blaise Triangle. I'm sorry, uh, Pascal's Triangle. His, his full name, Blaise Pascal. What a cool name, Blaise. Name my son, Blaise, right? As, Come here, Blaise, you know, man. <laughs> Go get the mail. <laughs> All right. Sometimes, you know, looking at uh, tri Pascal's Triangle, sometimes if they give you a term like the 12th term, you don't want to sit there and go all the way down, you know, 12 times like that. Um, and sometimes it, it asks you what are the first three terms of the, of like the, the, the 12th term or something like that into the 12. Uh, that may be a bit too much. So you can uh, just use the formula uh, to get each term. Uh, and this formula is given by here, a plus b to the nth. And so this is uh, n things taken 0 at a time times a to the n, that first term, and then plus n things taken 1 at a time. And look at how the, um, the powers go. The, uh, for n, it counts down. And then for the b exponents, they count up. Right? This is like b to the 0, b to the first, b to the second, and then all the way to b to the n. And so they talk about that. It's just been the summation of n things taken r at a time times a to the n minus r times b to the r. Well, that's the, um, that's, uh, the, the Blaise, uh, well, the Pascal's uh, triangle. Again, that same triangle um, was being used by, uh, by Chinese thinkers uh, five, six hundred years 
uh, before Pascal. Pretty cool. All right. Checkpoint. So it says expand. I'm going to use trying, uh, 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 Pascal's triangle to, uh, to expand that. We get one, one, and one. We get one, two, and one. We get one, three, three, and one. Then we get one, four, six, four, and one. All right? So again, this is N zero, N one, N two, N three, N four. So what we have is x plus 1 to the fourth. So I'm going by the coefficients. And then I take the first term as x, that's a, and the second term b, that's 1. So this is x to the, those terms count down, plus, and then I have 4x to the third times 1 to the first, plus 6 times x to the second times one. I'm just putting that one in there because I want you to see it. And this the the one goes up in power to the second and then plus four times x. X powers go down to the first and this is one to the third and then we have uh, no more x and then here the coefficient is one. So now we clean that up. X to the fourth plus 4x to the third, plus 6x squared, plus 4x plus 1. Again, look at the coefficients of 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. All right. All right. Let's try this one. So this is 1, 1, and 1. 1 at 1 plus 1 is 2, 1. 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1, right? So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and equal to 5. So I have this first term, that's x to the fifth, and then this is plus that 5 from the coefficients, and this is times x to the 4th times negative 2y to the 1st. Again, here a is x and b is negative 2y. Then this is plus 10 times x that's going down to the 3rd times negative 2y. That power goes up plus another 10 times x to the 2nd times negative 2y here that power goes up that's to the third plus 5 times x times negative 2y to the fourth and then plus negative 2y to the fifth so again let's look at the powers for the first term x to the fifth x to the fourth x to the third x to the second x to the first no more x Let's look at the powers for the second term. There's no negative 2y, negative 2y to the first, negative 2y to the second, negative 2y to the third, negative 2y to the fourth, negative 2y to the fifth. Note the emphasis on the power, right? <laughs> and then thirdly, look at the coefficients. 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. 1, 5, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. So now we just clean it up. So this is x to the fifth. This is minus 10 x to the fourth times y. N negative 2 is raised to the second, so that's, po that's positive. So it's just 4 times 10. That's 40 x to the third times y to the second. Negative. 2 to the third is, is 8 times 10. That's 80 times x squared. y to the third plus 2 to the, uh, the fourth is 16. 
times 5. All right, what's 16 times 5? Eighty. So that's eighty times x times y to the fourth, and this is minus thirty-two times y to the fifth. Two to the third is I'm sorry, two to the fifth is thirty-two. See how nice and smooth that is by using Pascal's triangle? Can you nod your head and say, yes? No. All right. Sometimes we talk about find a particular term in a binomial expression. Um, if, if the number is way out there, then typically you want to just use this formula, OK? And so finding a particular term in a binomial expression, here this is the r plus 1 term of the expression, uh, a plus b to the n is equal to, we get this right here, so if they ask for the the fifth term, then your r is going to be 4, because this is already computing the r plus 1, because it's taking into consideration n to the 0, that's the term, and then, and then n to the fir first power, n to the second power. Look at this example. Finding a single term of a binomial expression here, find the fourth term. That is, here, it, it looks like r is equal to uh, 4, but this is actually r is equal to 3 of 3x plus 2y raised to the second. We are looking for the fourth term. The value of r is 1 less than the term to be found. Why? Come back here, because this formula is already computing the r plus 1 term. So that's the only thing you have to remember. So here, this becomes seven things because of that seven there. N is seven. Seven things taken three at a time. And so this becomes the first term, 3x, to the, it's always the x minus 3 or the n minus r. And then this times the second term raised to the r power. Okay. Let's go back and look at the formula. So it's. Whatever n things taken all the time times a to the n minus r, right? Subtract those two guys. And then it's times b to the r, the r power. All right, let's, let's look and see. All right, so here it says find the fifth term in the uh, expression of 2x plus y to the, uh, the ninth. So what is n? It's 9, right? What is R? We're dealing with the fourth term, so R is what? I'm sorry, the fifth term. <laughs> Find the fifth term, so R is equal to what? Four. Because the formula is computing the R plus one. The formula is going to compute the fifth term, but you have to set R equal to four. A is equal to 2x, and B is equal to y. So we're looking for nine things taken four at a time times 2x raised to the 9 minus 4. That's 5. And then this is times that y raised to the 4. Here's the interesting thing. The combination of the powers should always equal uh, n. So for each binomial term, if I add the, the two powers, I should always come up with the number n. So that is 5 plus 4 for each term to give us 9. Let, let's go back. Make sure you see it. All right, here we're talking about n is 5. So notice this is 4 plus 1. That's 5. 3 plus 2 is 5. 2 plus 3 is 5. 1 plus 4 is 5. Five. You see that? So each term, each uh, each term, those the, the combination, the sum of the powers should always give you uh, n. So that's another way that you can check yourself. Check yourself.
all right? So the, the factorial, so this is nine factorial, all, all over four factorial, times nine minus four factorial, and then this is two to the fifth times x to the fifth, so this is 32 times x to the fifth times y to the fourth. So now we just have to uh, sep uh, simplify this nine factorial over four factorial times nine minus four factorial. So this is nine factorial, four factorial, five factorial times 32 times x to the fifth times y to the fourth. So for the nine factorial, it's going to count down to five factorial. Let's see the five, the biggest factorial downstairs. So this is nine times eight times seven times six times five factorial over. Now that four factorial, we'll go ahead and just count it down. This is four times three times two times one times five factorial. And then we have the 32 x to the fifth, y to the fourth. So the five factorial cancels, right? I see a three times two is six, that cancels. And then eight divided by four just leaves a two. Right. So let's multiply all that stuff together. So this is nine times two times seven times 32 times x to the fifth times y to the fourth. So 18 times 7 times 32. I get 4,032 times x to the fifth times y to the fourth. Checkpoint. I also got this one. Use the binomial uh, theorem to expand the binomial and express the result in a simplified form. Since they only go up to the third power, I'm going to use Pascal's triangle. Is everybody with me on that? Yeah. Just use Pascal's triangle. So, you know, one, one, and one. 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, and 1. So you, you remember, see how this goes down to four terms because n is equal to 3? Because again, this is n 0. This, this row is n 1, n 2. You, you know that to be the case because if you got x plus y to the second, right, then the coefficients are 1, 2, and 1. And then here, n to the third. And so, yes, so we have, we have 1 times that first term, 6x, and it's all being raised to the third, plus then I come to the coefficient 3, times 6x to the second here, and this is times y to the first, plus 3 times parentheses 6x to the first times y to the second, plus the coefficient now is 1, no more 6x, and then this is times y to the third. Look at all the powers for each term, the, the sum of the powers but each term must add up to 3. So I see 3, 2 plus 1 is 3, 1 plus 2 is 3, and 3. That's good. For the first term, 6x, the, term, the uh, powers go down. 3, 2, 1, no more 6x. For y, the second term, the powers go up. Here, y to the 0, y to the first, y to the second, y to the third. 
and then also look at the coefficients, they're supposed to be 1, 3, 3, 1. 1, 3, 3, 1. All right? We got everything there. So now I can just, just write it out. So this is 6 to the third, so it's 36 times 6. So this is 216 times x to the third, plus here this is 36 times 3, and even though I got the answer there. I always, I always check everything. That, that's what that, that's what mathematics teaches us. Not just about math, but even with life. What does that mean? If somebody tells you something, you just can't believe it. You have to look into it, verify that it's true. If you read something online, just because I'm reading it on the computer doesn't make it right. Do I trust the source? Is it a reliable source? Right. Is, is that source is it bias? You have to look into that as well. So, so that is 36 times 3. That's 108 times x squared times y plus 18 times xy to the second plus y to the third. Is that okay? It's Dr. Isaac Green used to ask the late great Dr. Isaac Green at Central Baptist Church in Pittsburgh. He would say every now and then in his sermon, am I doing all right? Boy, that was the old man. I don't Lord, Lord bless his soul. i never forget when I was, I had finished up, did my, my bachelor's, at Alabama State, finished up in 1993, May, and um, family came down from Indianapolis and and uh, were there. Even my, my dear grandmother didn't know that she was going to pass away and, uh, two months after that. And uh, she had raised me, raised my brother and me uh, uh, since we were little babies. And uh, my grandmother was there, bless her heart. And um, went to uh, University of Pittsburgh to, to uh, do a master's PhD. Had a, a fellowship uh, uh, to study there at Pitt with some very leading, well-known mathematicians. Uh, and uh, got up there and the, the scholarship that I had was, was paying, it covered, you know, everything. Um, uh, tuition, books, and, and then it was a stipend um, each month. I don't, I don't know how much I got. It was probably like $2,000 a month or something like that. Um, and I thought that it was going to start, I got up there in August, and classes started in August, so I thought that, um, I think this was the end of August that I would start receiving something the first of September. Well, you know, Fiscal years for for schools a little bit different. Uh, they don't that they start counting like that not the first the zeroth month I guess what they call it. they start counting the next month. So I didn't get paid until it was like the first of October when I got something. And um, and I've I've never been one to depend on family. I was always very independent even from a, a boy. And so I didn't, I didn't tell my, my mom, my grandmother had just died in August, we had buried her, and so I didn't, my mother lived in Indianapolis, I didn't tell her anything, but um, I was just, I was just dead broke, <laughs> and, um, and, um, you know, got kind of hungry, and, uh, but I, I said, Lord, you know, you, you take care, and Lord, you help, and so I didn't tell anybody, and, you know, just kept, you know, smiling on my face, and, um, well, a lady that was our youth musician at First Baptist in Montgomery, her home was from the Pittsburgh area. And um, and so um, I wanted to go by and see her. She was in the hospital. So um, she was having some kind of bone cancer. 
And so I was sitting in the hospital room with her, and there was a preacher on, on TV. And I said, who is that? And she said, that's, that's Dr. Green. You don't know Dr. Green? I said, no, ma'am, I don't. I said, what church does he pastor? And she said, Central Baptist Church there in the Hill District. If you, if you, if you look up the history of Pittsburgh, there was a, there was a historic black district in, in Pittsburgh back in the 1800s and the early 1900s called the Hill District. And, 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 and during the time of jazz and swing and Duke Ellington, all these very famous uh, men and women, um, they would play through, uh, on the Hill District and a very popular place. But by that time, and I was there in the 90s, you know, just like a ghost town, basically, almost. Um, uh, Dr. Green had, I think, gotten there to the church. He was from Texas uh, back in the 60s. So he got there in the heyday of this big hype. And so he was a well-known preacher, and he was elderly at that time. So I said, I want to go to his church. So that next Sunday, I went to, went to his church to visit him. He didn't know me. I didn't know him. Um, uh, I just just told a visitor, I stood up and told them that I'm from Alabama, I'm studying University of Pittsburgh, and um, uh, I'm a preacher and that kind of thing. And so he told me after service, he said, he said stay, I want to see you. I said, yes, sir. Took me up to his office, office set up very high, um, second, third level the church. And he said, sit down. And I said, yes, sir. We talked a little while. And he said this to me. He said, son, he said, um, he said, do you have any bread? What are you talking about? <laughs> and I, I guess he was saying, are you, you know, are you okay? Are you hungry? I don't know if I was probably thin. You know, I don't know if I looked like I was hungry. I said, I'm fine, sir. And so we got through talking, and he reached over inside of his, his desk, and he pulled out, I don't put out a stack of money, and he gave it to me. He said, son. Get yourself some bread. <laughs> Let me tell you something, folks. I, I didn't tell him, I didn't tell anybody what I was going through. But I was definitely hungry. And um, I didn't tell my mother. And I left his office. I was in tears. And I said, thank you, Lord. And I said, thank you, Lord. And I went to that grocery store and I got me some bread. <laughs> Amen. Some sardines and, you know, because I'm, I'm very frugal, you know. I got some sardines and we call them. Vienna's <laughs> sausage, right? And some crackers and some light bread. And, um, but anyway, that old man, he, he'll be preaching. And he, I, I guess maybe the, the crowd would kind of get like how you all are treating me right now. You get kind of quiet. And so he would say, am I doing all right? <laughs> let me finish up so I can leave y'all alone. Oh, boy, let me stop telling these old stories. Amen. Oh, boy, I'm just country. Oh, bless his holy name. Use the binomial theorem to expand. Uh, but my point is, uh, hopefully you see it in, in that. I don't know if you're a praying person. I'm not saying you ought to be. But uh, it does help. And if you're going through things, he'll help you. You don't have to go and tell him or her or you don't have to put your hand out if you're in between. If you just tell him in secret, he, he said he, he'll reward you openly. Use the binomial theorem to expand the binomial. 5x plus 3 uh, to the 4th. Um, and so I'm going to use that again. So we get 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1. One, three, three, one, one, four, six, four, one. Let's see what we got. This is zero, one, two, three, four. That's that's the line that we want. The first term that A is five X and B is three. So we have the first term, that's five X. That's always raised to that nth power. So n is 4, so this is 4, and then plus, I come to the coefficient, 4 times parentheses, 5x. Make sure you put that 5x, that term in parentheses, because that 5 has to be to the power and also the x, the third power. And then uh, the b term is 3, that's to the first. Then plus, I come to 6, the coefficient, and then parentheses, 
5x, its power is going down. Then the second term, which is 3, its power is going up. Then plus 4, the coefficient, times 5x, power is going down to the first. And then this is plus, the coefficient is 1, no more 5x because the power there goes down to 0. And then this is the 3 to the, I think I missed it here, I'm sorry. This is 3 to the third, and then this is plus 3 to the fourth. Okay. And then we'd better check just to make sure we got everything right. So this is, that's 25 times 25, that's 625 times x to the fourth plus that's 5 to the third that's 125 times 12 125 times that 4 times 3 times 12 that's 1500 and that's x to the third plus this is 25 times 9 times 6 So that's 1,350 times x squared plus this is 20 times, uh, that's 3 to the third, that's 27. So that's 540 times x to the first and then plus 3 to the fourth, well that's 9 to the second, that's 81. I want, to do, I want to do one that I asked you on, on the test, and it's also on that quiz that I gave you, where you have to find a particular term or you have to find, it, it may say, the first three terms. For things like that, if the number is big, you definitely want to use the formula, so let me show you that. Any questions so far? This is one where it, it says write the first three terms of the binomial expression. Now again, you can use Pascal's triangle, you know, for all of them. Uh, de depends on how big the number is, it, it, you might have to, you know, keep on going and, and going out. Um, I think it's the next one that the number is bigger. Yes, yeah, that one there. So for this one, I go ahead and still use Pascal's triangle, and that, that's fine. And I don't mind even working it both ways just to kind of show you, just to see, hey, you know, which one do you prefer? It's up to you. So one, 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 two, one, one, three, three, one, one, four, six, four, one. This is to the fifth, so we gotta go down one more. One, five, ten, ten, five, one. So the first term, well, n is five. I think I want to say that. That A is X, and that second term B is 9. So we have X to the fifth plus, look at the coefficient, that's 5 times X to the fourth times 9 plus 10 times X to the third times 9 to the second plus 10 times X. Well, these powers are going down. And then the, the 9, its power is going up. And it said just the first three terms. I'm sorry. So 1, 2, 3. My bad. See that? Just the first three terms. So that's all we need there. And then just simplify that. So this is x to the fifth 
plus 45 times x to the 4 plus 180 times x to the 3rd. That's 9 times 9, 81. I'm thinking, I'm, boy, how can I make that mistake? Not 9 times 2. You didn't see me do that. I have to go and delete that from the video. <laughs> oh, he's a perfect teacher. Yeah, right. Y'all know the truth, right? But anyway. So that's 9 times 9 is 81 times 10 is 810 times x to the third. Again, it only wanted the first three terms, right? Okay. Now look at this one. This guy, write the sum of the first three terms. Since that's going to the seventh, that's going to be too much for me in terms of trying to do that Pascal's triangle. So I'm going to use the formula. I'm, I'll show you that right here. So uh, again, um, n is 7, a is x, b is that is the negative 4 y. So you have to consider the sign as well, too. So for the first uh, three terms, this is here, seven things start off taking zero at a time. And then that's times that first term, which is x to the seventh. And then it's the negative 4y to the zero, plus seven things taking one at a time. So this is they say the first three terms. And then this is times x to the six times negative 4y here to the first. And then plus seven things taken two at a time. This is x to the fifth times negative 4y to the second. So, and again, look at the power. Seven and zero is seven. Six and one is seven. Five and two, seven. So that, that makes sense. So here, this is seven factorial over zero factorial. This is seven minus zero factorial, which is just seven factorial. And then this is times x to the seven. Negative four y to the zero is just one. So then this is, I'm gonna just use the minus from here, that minus four, I'm gonna just put the minus there. So this is seven factorial over one factorial. And this is six factorial times x to the six times four y plus 7 factorial over 2 factorial times 5 factorial times x to the fifth. 4 to the, uh, negative 4 to the second is 16 times y to the second. So we clean it up. So this is just x to the seventh. 7 factorial divided by 6 factorial is just 7. So this is minus 7 times 4. 28, I just put, just say times 4, and this is times x to the 6 times y, plus this is 7 factorial divided by 5 factorial is 7 times 6, all over 2, 2 factorial, and this is times that 16 times x to the 5th times y to the 2nd. So now let's see if we get the answer. This is x to the 7th minus 28 times x to the 6 times y. And then this is plus um, 21 times 16. Three, three, six times x to the fifth times y, sec y to the second. Is everybody good with that? Okay. Got it? Okay. All right, here, um, find the, the third term. Let me see what I, I think that's the last one there. So let's see if you can get this one. See if you can get that one. You see the answer up there, but uh, let's see if you can work that one. Um, do 
do you remember the, the formula? So this the formula is n things taken r at a time times the first term a to the n minus r b to the r. And if they ask for the third term, what is r? If they say third term, r is what? Two, Two exactly. Right? What is n? Six. Very good. All right? That that key, that kicker is make sure you get R as two, because the formula is already computing R plus one automatically. Okay. Give you a couple minutes on that and see if you get it. Okay, so you have six things taken two at a time. And then this is times three X raised to the six minus two n minus r, that's 4, times the second term, y, raised to the second power. Right. So that's 6 factorial over 2 factorial. And this is 6 minus 2, or 4 factorial. This is 3 raised to the fourth. So that's 81 times x to the fourth times y to the second. And so the 6 factorial divided by 4 factorial is just 6 times 5. That's all over the 2. 2 factorial is 2 times 1, times 81, times x to the fourth, times y to the second. So we have 15 times 81. get 1,215 times x to the fourth times y to the second. Okay. All right. Try your hand at this one. 